The 89th Annual Seattle Sports Star of the Year Awards were a huge success. Over 900 people packed the Westin and downtown Seattle to take in the event, and the stars were definitely out. Chris Egan and I had a chance to sit down with some of those stars and other special guests, and you can see the entire show on King 5 March 9th. For now, here's some of the interviews you will not see on the broadcast. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm hey, glad to be here. How, how much fun is this for you, kind of getting around? And I mean, it's like the Oscar night for you here tonight. Man, it's been great, you know, mainly because I'm back in Seattle. You know, I've been out training in Cali, and I've been on the move, you know, just uh, getting ready for all the draft stuff. So um, it's been great. It's great to be back. Yeah, we were wondering, actually, if you were going to be able to make it tonight. We know it's a big honor, and uh, you have to be one of the favorites to win Male Sports Star of the Year, Michael. But take us through uh, what it's been like since that Senior Bowl and all the working out you've been doing. How's it been for you? Yeah, it's been busy. You know, it's been busy, but it's been fun. You know, I've been enjoying it all, you know, and um, just uh, falling in love with the process, you know, and day, day in, day out, you know, just putting in the work to, you know, try to uh, become a better, better person, a better player each and every day. So. The past year, take me through it. You've had a little time to sit back and, and kind of relish it. How special was this year, the undefeated season, the win at the Sugar Bowl? Obviously, the national championship game didn't go your way, but just just how special was this past year for you? And was, the Heisman, of course, as well, too. I mean, it was very special, you know, uh, and to be able to do it with my brothers at, at UW, you know, it was, it was very special. You know, um, definitely a biggest reason why we came back. You know, a lot of guys came back, yeah. you know, for the 2023 season to, to uh, leave our mark the way that we did and uh, to come back even better than we were the year before. And it was, it was very fun to be able to do that. And uh, we're all super blessed. You know, we've seen your leadership on the field, of course. But when you talk about running it back, as soon as Michael Penix said he's coming back, it felt like everybody else started falling in line and that whole team ran it back. And that has to make you feel good because I am throughout your career, leadership's been very important for you. Right, yeah, it definitely made me feel good. And uh, just showing the guys, and the guys, they believed in something, you know, believed in something bigger than themselves. You know, they they believed that we'll be able to come back and, you know, have a better year and uh, continue to grow as a team and, you know, as players individually. And everybody, everybody did that. I feel like everybody elevated. You know, um, I believe we have about 13, 13, maybe 13, 14. you're right, man. 13 Most in the ever. combine. Most ever. You know, man, so, um, man, just a lot of guys, you know, I feel like they, they all they all appreciate it also. Paul mentions, Michael, that you'll be one of the favorites to win the award tonight, but let's be honest, there's another Husky up for the award. Roma oh. Dunes, say how special of an athlete of, is Rome, and he's going to have a bright future as well in the NFL. Yeah, he's amazing, man. Uh, obviously, you know, our connection, you know, it was electric, you know, and um, the things that he was able to do this these past two years with me and in, in this program, you know, it's been amazing. And, um, man, I, I'm his biggest fan. You know, I'm super proud of him and everything that, you know, he, he's been through to get to where he's at today. So what can you tell us? I, I know I don't want to ask you too much about the draft or the combine, but, Michael, going to the combine, you know, how do you keep your emotions in check and, and – you know, will you participate in everything? You know, can, can you give us a little insight of what Michael Penix will be doing at the combine? Yeah, uh, just being myself. You know, that's how that's how I got here. You know, I, I never tried to be anything anything other than myself. You know, and just going out there and being confident and you know just having fun. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, so uh, I mean, nerves might be up a little bit, but at the same time, you know, it's still the game that I love, and I'm just gonna go out there and have fun with it and uh, enjoy enjoy it all. And Michael, I have to ask yesterday. Uh, actually, it was earlier today. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself. Earlier today, Ryan Grubb was introduced as the offensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks. What are the Seattle Seahawks getting in Ryan Grubb? Man, a great guy. First of all, before even a great coach, he's a great guy. You know, he's a guy that that's going to work extremely hard. You know, um, uh, I, I already I already know he's the guy that's going to be in there early morning. You know, uh, make sure he's getting filmed in. He's going to get a workout in. You know, he's going to be there late nights. And I don't feel like any coach out there uh, puts in as much time as he does, you know, into his craft and, you know, the things that he, he does each and every day to, to be successful, you know. And um, they're, they're going to get a very great coach for I sure. I love it. Yeah, high praise from a guy who no one knows it better than Michael Penix as far as Ryan Grubb's personality and what he brings to the table. So you've experienced it for the last two years. We're hoping to see you have a great NFL career. Looking forward to the combine, looking forward to the draft. Man. All that, uh, all that speculation out there. Do you block it out? Yeah, man. Uh, I don't. I don't worry about that. Yeah, you, know, you almost um, have to, don't you? Yeah, you can't. You can't focus on the things you can't control. You know. So for me, I just go out there and just have fun and you know be myself. You know. And whatever happens, happens. And I'm gonna make the most of any opportunity that I get. Well, it's gonna be fun to watch, man. We had fun covering you for the Absolutely. last two years. Thank you, Michael. It's been awesome. Yes, Thanks Thank a lot. You. Good I luck to you, it. man. Thank you. 
<laughs> receiving the humanitarian award tonight, how big of an honor is this for you and just your thoughts on tonight? Oh, God. I mean, it's hard to put into words, obviously, even just the namesake of the award, Paul Allen, what, you know, him and his family and all the work that they've done in this city. I've only been here 10 years, um, so it, it feels very special to be recognized in this way and, uh, you know, hopefully give back to the city as much as it's given me. It's been, you know, my home in so many ways, both literally and figuratively, uh, and it'll, it'll always kind of be that way. And obviously, being with Sue, having her show me the ropes, uh, she's been here a little bit longer than I am and uh, a little bit more successful, just barely. But, barely, uh, right? Barely. Yeah. Just, just like, you know, four or five times more. It's fine. Uh, it's totally fine. It's fine. Uh, but, no, it's, it's a huge honor, and we're so happy to be able to be here tonight. I think it's great. That you mentioned 10 years, and I, I think it's, it's hard to believe that it has been 10 years. Does life just yeah. blow by for you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't believe it's been, you know, even the end of the season just feels like it was yesterday. So to be able to be here this long, to spend um, this long with one club and be able to play here with Seattle Rain uh, for so long. We just went back to the name change. Shout out to that. I'm very <laughs> happy about that. Um, back to the Seattle Rain. Um, yeah, it just, it feels like home in so many ways. It feels like a place where I really grew up and became an adult. And I think I was 26 when I got here, but you know, you don't know anything. At 20. You think you know everything. Yeah, that's right. You literally know nothing. That's so, right. To be able to grow up here and, and call it home is really special. As we talk about the rain, and, and I see you and Sue, and I, I look at you two, and I'm like, you two can still play. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> how tough that. was the decision, uh, you know, to make that decision that this was going to be my final year in the retirement? You know, in the end, it, it wasn't that tough. It was it was time. My body was my body was knocking. Yeah. Obviously, in my last game, it uh, it had a real big knock. Um, but I think there's just some things we'll just always miss. Though it's always a uh, uh, not sad, but you miss it. You know, I'm gonna go to the rain opener. I'm gonna be devastated that yeah. I'm not there. We're gonna go to the storm opener. I'm sure we're gonna. Sue's gonna be devastated that she's not out there. You know, I want to. I, I want to be in the know too. I'm missing all the drama. I'm missing all the tea. Um, so it's sad, but I feel like for both of us, we're such a huge part of both of those franchises and clubs, and we'll continue to be. And we're literally, you know, the biggest fan. But there'll always be the the little bit that we're sad not to be out there. Yeah. Of course. Well, you say that you want to be in the know, but I have to ask you, like. You know, there must be requests for you constantly to consult or be around teams and be around players. Um, do you want to be around uh, the U.S. team and some of the other teams that, that might come calling? The well, sport itself. I know that I know there's some, some friction, of course, yeah. but you've done so much to grow the sport as well yeah. and the importance of it off the field. Of course I want to be involved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here, I'm ready. <laughs> um, no, I want to make sure we, you know, I do it in the, in the right way and I want to make sure, first and foremost, whatever you know, team or environment that I would be stepping into, you know, that's good for the team and the environment. Um, you know, I know I'm a, a big personality. Of course, with the rain, that's those are my homies and that's my family. Um, but I feel that way about the national team as well. And I think when the time is right, um, you know, I can't wait to go back to a game and, you know, give everyone my thoughts, just like I always do, whether they want them or not, they're going to get <laughs> unsolicited thoughts coming at you. So. Paul mentions the growth of the sport. I have a 21-year-old daughter, plays tennis at Portland State. She has your book in her room. She met Sue Bird 20 years ago, and Sue kind of gave her some wisdom. Not only the growth of your sport, but the growth of women's sports. How key has that been for you? I mean, I know you're receiving an award tonight. Part of that stems from that, but just I, I know you're not going to stop on growing, growing sports for girls. No, no, definitely not. Um, yeah, I mean, if, I obviously have loved playing, and and that's a huge passion of mine. But I think the what you know, speaking to what you just said, that's I think that's like really my passion is yeah. just the the business side and growing it, and um, you know, getting people to look at us the way we look at us, and you know, see all the value that's there and. Um, it's been a, a huge joy to be able to marry what we, you know, is sort of a, a talent that we were just born with. And of course it takes hard work, but marry that with our work off the field means everything. I feel like both of us are uniquely positioned, just having played the sport so long, being who we are in it, um, you know, to be one of the architects of just an incredibly exciting future moving forward. Well, we hope that you uh, continue to give back, Megan, because you have so much to give to the sport, so much to give to women's sports as well. And um, well, I sure hope you continue to be out there and, and be seen and be heard. Oh, absolutely. You know me. I can't stay out of the limelight too long. <laughs>
<laughs> you guys, let me ask you this. You brought up the, the little banter between you and Sue. Is there ever a little trash talking, a little fun talking back and forth with her over not, accomplishments and things like that? It's not even fun. It's like we pull the rings and the medals and out, and I'm like, I, you know, I pull my couple of medals out, and she's like, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> I actually have... I, have, I think this this is one of Sue's um, oh. class rings. It might be like a championship <laughs> ring or a, or a Big Ten ring. Is there ring one that, sport you're competing? Not Big Ten. Oh, my gosh. Big East. She's going to kill me for saying that. It's not Big Ten. Big East or something. It's just like it's literally no competition. So, like, I have fun with it because I'm like um, – I think I'm accomplished, and I'm actually not, and you're the most important person in my family, so I just try to do my best to keep up with the banter. Well, well congrats on the award absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for dropping by. Appreciate your candor, too. Yeah. This yeah. has been great. Thank you, guys. I, I feel like we just introduced her, her rookie year. <laughs> Man. What, what was that like? I, I look we back. We were kids at, back then. I mean, seriously, yeah. you look back at 20 years of Sue Bird, and you're just like, wow. I mean, uh, you see the trophies upstairs in the Champions Gallery and uh, the, the, the four championships. I mean, First of all, Sue, you, you come here tonight, and Megan talked a lot about your relationship, which is just awesome. You guys sound like you have a lot of fun together. What's it like for you to be here tonight? Oh, it's amazing. Um, the minute that we found out that Megan was going to be winning an award, um, there it's kind of like, you know, schedules are busy. Can we make this work? It was like Seattle Sports Commission. Like, we're going, like, without a doubt. Um, and I think that just speaks to how we feel about the Seattle community. Um, wanting to be able to continue to build our relationships here. Um, obviously, I'm very proud of Megan. Also really excited for the other awards. I'll be presenting tonight, so I'm in a new role. I'm in a very new role here. But um, like I said, the minute they told us when this was happening, we were like, we're going for sure. Yeah, well, and, and I think that's the thing we love about you, Sue, is we go back. We were joking. We remember your rookie year, but you yeah. always so were so gracious with your time coming over to King 5, Northwest Cable News. Uh, and talking about the storm and all that. But let's talk a little bit about Megan Rapino sure. Winning the Humanitarian Award, just your thoughts on this. This is a great honor for her tonight. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, Megan has had an unreal soccer career, right? Won all the things, Olympics, World Cup, you name it. The impact on the field, easy to see. It's, it's the impact off the field that she has really done things that nobody else has done, no other athlete has done. So for her to get this award is fitting. Um, like I said, I'm super proud, glad we could we could be here for it. And um, yeah, it'll be fun. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I like being a plus one. It's different, <laughs> but I don't mind it. Yeah, it is fun. Like it. Gotta take some pressure off a little bit yeah, too little if you're bit. just a guest. <laughs> but uh, what's it like for you to walk around this room? It's filling up fast and to see some of these famous names and faces. Yeah, so we literally just got in the door, so you're our first stop. So I haven't, I haven't been able to make the rounds yet, but already saw Kenny Main. I feel like this is a reunion. This, this event, this night, it's a reunion of, of sports, of Seattle sports, even seeing you guys, right? Like obviously the coverage that you have given us through the years means so much. So it's always really wonderful to see familiar faces. Um, I won't even bring up the gift cards. This is really why I would go do all these <laughs> I know. interviews. You had some good dinners <laughs> through the years. Some amazing dinner, shout out C-Star. Um, <laughs> you, you want to announce that you'll be playing in the Paris Olympics? Is there any, uh -oh. any chance? No. Oh man, I love <laughs> that you remember not. the gift cards, man. Of That's course. so awesome. C-Star. What was your favorite item at C-Star, by the way? Oh man, um, you know, I never I only I've, I've only been to the one in Bellevue. Okay. Fun fact. So God, it was a while ago. I don't know. Well, the listen. fish. The fish. <laughs> good, the fish. Good answer. Good broad answer. Yeah. All right. Well, I think Blitz wants to see you over there. He's all yeah. chomping at the bit, so we'll let it's you get exciting. out of here. Enjoy oh. the evening, and thanks yeah, a lot. It's great to see you guys. All right. Thanks. This is one of our favorites of all time, Aaron, Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan. I you went from a Hall of Famer <laughs> to... <laughs> we make Mac-10 hold the mic. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I know, uh, you know, first of all, it's great to see you, man. I mean, we followed your career. I remember talking to you when I first got to Seattle in 1993, sitting across the table for you at Old, C uh, C Old Sonics headquarters, and just... I was in awe of you, Nate, because I had just come from Flint, Michigan. I'm like, I'm sitting here talking to Nate McMillan. What a great one of my first assignments. And you were so nice, man, because you could have just sit there with this rookie and said, this guy doesn't know what he's talking and about. And look at Nate, he's still going strong. But he's you were so genuine, man. So, and, and that's one of the great things Chris and I were just talking about. You guys, some of these great athletes out there from Seattle and around the world, um, they're so great on the field. But when they're able to be genuine and authentic, that's a big thing. And we always appreciated that about you. Uh, I really appreciate that, and that's important to me. I had a young lady to, uh, I was doing my foundation, and uh, this young lady attended my foundation, and come to find out she was the wife of the president of my foundation. And she said she had met me on the plane. And uh, she said she asked me for an autograph, and I said, how was I? 
She's like, he was just the nicest. I said, okay, uh, that's cool. I mean, that's that's important to me. You know, that's important to me, uh, the character. And a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, people people judge your character about when when you're not in the light. Yeah. You know, when they see you out on the streets. And uh, for me, I, you know, I had nothing but love for this entire community. I understood that uh, you guys have a job to do and uh, you're supporting us and, you know, try to make it easy as possible on both of us and, and really butter you guys up so you don't kill us when we lose in the first round to the Nuggets. <laughs> Nate, when, when you look at, obviously the NBA is doing very well. Yeah. And, and, and I heard somebody recently say, the NBA doesn't need Seattle, but the NBA would love to have Seattle again. And there's talk out there about expansion. And obviously you put your heart and soul into this city. Just your thoughts as we talk about maybe getting the Sonics back here in Seattle. It just, I mean, you, you've got the pulse of the NBA. You know it well. Just your thoughts on that. I think the NBA does need Seattle. Yeah. Uh, it was a good market. When we had the team here, uh, because of some financial uh, situations and things that was going on with schools and and roads and uh, the monorail and all of that, uh, we uh, we just could not, you know, afford to build another arena at that time, which was it sounded like you know the thing that uh, kept us from keeping the team here. But we have as much history and tradition as any team. Uh, in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, this is an absolute great market. In the 90s when we were just talking about that, this was one of the best places for sports. I mean, you think about the Hall of Famers uh, that was uh, planned at that time. When you look at Gary, who became a Hall of Famer, you look at Rodriguez and Ken Grif Griffey Jr. and Egger and you know, all of those guys. I mean, uh, Husky football was exciting. Sonics basketball was exciting, the Mariners was exciting, the Seahawks, you know, it was just, we were going from one season to another and we all were supporting each other and able to uh, survive uh, because our fan base was committed to all of us. So it is a, a good market for sports, it's certainly a good market for basketball and I'm, you know, I have my fingers crossed that the NBA will uh, you know, bring a franchise back yeah, to Seattle. I love it. I got to believe that's one of the worst kept secrets out there is that the Sonics will come back to Seattle yeah. for sure. I want to ask you one last question before we do, let you go, but you've had a lot of success in the coaching race, Nate, and, and certainly as a player. Some, some players can't make that transition to coach, but you definitely did it with success. Um, are we pretty much, are we through seeing you on the sidelines? Is that going to be it for you on the court? Uh, it really, uh, I don't know uh, right now the, the right situation has to come about. Uh, you know, right now what I've focused on this season is my foundation. I just started the Nate McMillan Foundation to uh, mentor uh, fatherless boys, uh, 10 to 18, and, uh, you know, really give them uh, a platform, uh, try to empower these young kids to, uh, you know, to have hope. Uh, but they need, they need people, they need programs to support them, and especially the fatherless young boys uh, that are out here uh, who have been raised by single mothers. Uh, I was, my mother was single, had six kids, and if it wasn't for uh, coaches and teachers and mentors, and I had an older brother uh, and fathers in the community, uh, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in. So for me, it's just to extend a hand back uh, to the kids and to my community uh, to give them some support and guidance uh, and a role model uh, so that they can transition from being a boy to a man. And, and Nate, real quick, how do they help? How do they get involved with that? The NateMcMillanFoundation.org. Okay. You can go to that website, uh, take a look at us. Right now, it's just in North Carolina. I want to, uh, I'm going to eventually bring that out to Seattle. I've been out. Uh, here a few times and talking with a number of different groups. Uh, Rise Above is one of the groups that I've been uh, uh, talking with. Uh, so go to natemcmillanfoundation.org and uh, take a look at us and uh, 
give us some support. Yeah, well, I mean, your authenticity comes right through, Nate. We appreciate it. It's no surprise that that's a, a road you're going down, and I'm sure that everybody appreciates it as well. So thank you very much for coming on, and, man, it's great to see you. You look great. Good to see you. You All look right. great. Nate McMillan. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Enjoy thank the you, evening. All right. Okay, good seeing you. Thank you, Nate. All right.